This is the introductory tutorial on how to use the digital slide archive. Uh, this covers you know, how to view slides in the viewport and how to use some of the annotation tools. This tool is supported by the NCI Informatics Technology for Cancer Research Program and you can visit us at the GitHub page and the link posted below. So in this tutorial, we'll, you'll learn how to navigate projects, which we call collections in the DSA, and how to open images. We'll look at how to use the viewport to explore whole slide images. You'll learn how to create image annotations using predefined styles. Uh, we'll show you how to generate new annotation styles. And you'll also learn how to modify annotations and control their display properties in the viewport. So first, let's look at how to navigate the collection menus and open slides in the viewport. This is the landing page you'll see when you use the URL provided by your site admin. In the upper right corner, there's a link to register and create a user account and also to log in. Just enter your login credentials at this window. Uh, there's also a link here in case you've forgotten your password to request a password reset. So as you click login, you'll see that the upper right uh, lists your user account name. This user uh, account is demo. We use this for generating tutorials. If you click on this, you'll see how to access your folders and uh, image analysis jobs. There's a link that allows you to log out. And you can also access some of your uh, settings for your account. So here you can go and change your password and you can also set up uh, two-factor authentication as well. Let's go back to the landing page. You can just click on the Digital Slide Archive logo up there at any time to go back to the landing page. And the main link that you're going to use to access your slides if you're performing annotations is this bottom link here that says Histomics TK and go ahead and click on that link and that will take us to a blank page and to open an image we're going to navigate up to the button there that says open images and clicking on that button will raise a menu that allows you to look and see what collections you have access to so that top list there that's those are the collections that this account has permissions to view so if you click on the tutorial collection, you'll see that there's a single folder in here. And folders are used inside of collections to organize slides. So you could organize slides by cohort or by stain type. Uh, and in fact, you can actually organize slides automatically into folders based on metadata. But here, uh, we just have a single folder. And we'll go ahead and click this and open it up uh, to reveal the images inside. So you can see there's a single image in this folder. There's a thumbnail overview that's provided so you can see what the tissue looks like. Uh, the file name is a link there and if you click this link it will populate the load image dialog. And then you can click open to load this image into the viewport. So now you're going to learn how to view the images in the viewport. Uh, we'll show you how to pan and zoom and perform some of the basic uh, control functions to navigate through the slide. When a slide is loaded, you're presented with a low magnification overview. The viewport is everything below the Histomics TK logo. You can move your cursor and use this mouse scroll to zoom into an area. You can click and drag the image to the right and the left, up and down to pan. As you do this, the scale bar and the coordinates update in the lower right corner and the magnification updates in the upper right corner. Everything that you need to know about a view is encoded in the URL and that, uh, that updates as you move through the image. And so you can copy a view and send it to someone who has permission to access this view. And as long as they have permissions, they'll see the same view just using the URL. And so this is helpful when you're trying to save views for yourself or to share views with other people. The zoom bar shows the magnifications that you can use. And so FIT just scales things to the current window. 
we have the various magnifications that are native to the whole slide image shown in the large icons and then we also offer a digital zoom which is helpful for annotating very detailed structures and so you can see that's a little blurry but if you need to trace things it can be helpful you can download a current area to just generate an image or a snapshot just like you would with a regular microscope and then if you hold control you can rotate the image which can also be helpful for annotations sometimes you're working inside of a rectangle and the content you want isn't really aligned with the slide and so you can rotate and draw the rectangle at an angle here are some of the keyboard shortcuts that are available in the digital slide archive and so you can use the keyboard to show and hide all annotations to change the objective for panning, zooming, and rotation and more sh keyboard shortcuts will be added in the future thank you Next we're going to review how to create annotations using the annotation tools in Digital Slide Archive. So it's helpful to define some terminology when discussing annotations. And so when we say annotation, we mean a, a single shape, a rectangle, point, or polygon that's generated by a human or an algorithm. When we say style, we're referring to the color and display attributes of annotations. And so we often generate a set of styles on a project that are used to represent concepts like cell type. And this helps us just visually group annotations together. Finally, there's the concept of document. This refers to how annotations are stored in the database. This is something that for the most part users don't have to worry about, but we mention it because it does show up in the user interface. This will be hidden from users in future releases. To demonstrate the annotation tools, we're going to be using nuclear classification as an example in this tutorial. And so we often use annotation tools in DSA to create data for training and validating machine learning algorithms. And we're just going to adapt that use case here to show you how to use the tools. The slide that we're using in this tutorial comes from the Cancer Genome Atlas Breast Cancer Project. And we're going to use this slide to label lymphocytes and other types of cells and show how you might generate data for cell classification and detection algorithms. So we've zoomed into an area that has some interesting content that we'd like to annotate and so now we're going to walk through the process of creating annotations and so first we're going to create an annotation document then we're going to import some styles and then we're going to use the annotation tools to create the annotations themselves. So in the upper right corner below the magnification panel there's an annotation panel and this is where we manage the annotation documents and it has some other tools that control sort of global display properties of annotations. So we're going to go ahead and click new to create a new annotation document. So we'll enter the document name and the document description. Neither of these is important. And so after we do this, you'll see that there's now a folder icon that appears in the annotation panel. And that says other. Uh, that's because we don't have any styles yet. And underneath that folder icon, we have the document that was created. So after the first annotation document is created, the draw panel will appear below the annotation panel. This is where we're going to manage styles. And this panel also contains the actual tools for drawing, so the point, the rectangle, the polygon, and the line buttons. So we're going to go ahead and, and import some styles. So go ahead and click on the gear icon. So we're going to import a set of predefined styles. So if you're working on an annotation project, often the coordinator will have a file that has a style definition for you. And this just helps maintain uniformity of the style names and appearances across different annotators. So if you click on the names now you can see we have several styles that are available and we're just going to go ahead and look at some of the properties. So the label is a string of text that will appear in different places within the viewport as you hover over annotations for example. It's just an extended description. Line width controls the width of the line for annotations like rectangle and line. 
And then we have line color and fill color. And these just control the edge appearance and the interior color. And so we have four annotation styles defined. So we have three styles for different types of nuclei. We have a mononuclear style, and that's blue with a blue fill. We have a non-mononuclear style, that's a green with a green fill. And then we have an unknown style, which is used to annotate cells that can't reliably be classified. The fourth style is a region of interest style. And so this is how, what we use to define the rectangles or the regions where we're going to annotate nuclei. And so let's go ahead and create that rectangle. So we're going to click Save to save our import. We're going to select the Rectangle tool. And we're going to go ahead and draw a rectangle. Click and drag. And you'll see the shaded region represents the rectangle. And then when you release, the rectangle will be created. So next we're going to annotate the nuclei in the region of interest. And so we're going to go ahead and select the nuclear style uh, for mononuclear cells and we have a couple mononuclear nuclei in the upper left corner. So we're going to select the point annotation tool and we're just going to place a point at the center of each of those nuclei. And so as you see once we create these annotations they're listed here in the draw menu as individual elements in that list. And you can also see that the folders under the annotation menu have updated names based on the styles that we're using. So now we're going to select the non-mononuclear style and we're going to annotate the other nuclei. And so we're going to use the point tool again. And we're going to click on the center of nuclei that are wholly contained or mostly contained within the region of interest. And so there's a bit of a judgment call there. But we typically leave nuclei that are on the boundary uh, that are not uh, mostly contained within the region uh, unannotated. And so another judgment call is whether a nucleus is in plane or not. And so we typically ignore out of plane nuclei like that. And so we're just going to go ahead and keep clicking. And so we try to capture the center of mass of the cell. This is just for training the detection algorithms that, that seems to work the best. So we have a nucleus here that is in plane but the type is not clear and so we're going to label that as unknown. And we also missed a nucleus. We're going to go back and catch that. Okay. Let's minimize the draw panel to see more of the slide. So you can minimize any of the panels by clicking the arrow in the upper right corner. We also have buttons that control the visibility of the annotations to be able to see the slide underneath. In the annotation panel we have a couple of sliders that can be used to control the transparency of all of the annotations globally. And so we can control the transparency of just the fill or the interior or we can control the overall transparency. So often we use the fill when we're annotating very large regions and we just want to see the outline. But we want to have the interior region shaded slightly but be able to see through and see what's underneath. So we also have tools to be able to view detailed information about the annotations. So if you click the labels checkbox and then you hover over annotations in the viewport, you'll see detailed information about the style, and where the annotation is located, the coordinates, as well as information about the creation date. And this information can be helpful during a review. More detailed information about the annotations and their provenance is stored in the database. And this can be particularly helpful when you're doing projects where there are multiple rounds of review and some annotations may undergo changes. And so this information can be accessed programmatically using the application programming interface. Next we're going to look at how to create your own annotation styles. We're going to go back to the draw menu and click on the gear icon to bring up the 
Edit Annotation Style menu. And so you can see if you click on the names, you see the list of styles that we imported. We have buttons here to delete styles and to add styles. So let's just delete the default style that shows up by default. And we're going to add a new style. And so we'll click the plus button and type in the name new and label this practice and then we'll modify the line width here to one to make this slightly thinner so we'll use this style for rectangles and polygons so the fill color is represented by a triplet of numbers representing the red green and the blue and so we can either edit this manually here or we can use this color picker to do it graphically. So we can adjust the color using this rainbow bar here. We can adjust the hue here and the panel on the left. We can also adjust the transparency on the right. And so I'd like to use a blue green and so I'm just going to go ahead and edit this manually and give a value of 0, 255, and 255, and hit enter. For the fill color, if we're doing rectangles and polygons, we often want to have things to be transparent, and so we'll set this to black, and we'll set the transparency to full. And you'll see that produces an RGBA value of 0, 0, 0, 0. And that last 0 represents the transparency. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. And then let's use our digital zoom and zoom in on this region. And we're going to place a rectangle as a bounding box around one of these nuclei. And so we'll select the new style and the rectangle. And we'll just drag that bounding box across that nucleus. We also have a polygon tool that can be used to trace objects. So we're going to use the polygon and trace this nucleus. So you can just click to start the polygon and release the mouse. Trace around the boundary. And as you approach the beginning point, you'll right click to complete the polygon. Now the shading just indicates which region of the polygon is the interior. And it just helps you trace complex objects. So in this tutorial, we first looked at how to navigate the collection menus. We show you how to log into the system, how to select a collection. We introduced the concept of folders. And we showed you how to load slides. We also looked at the viewport and controls for exploring whole slide images. So we looked at the mouse controls for pan, zoom, and rotate, as well as the buttons for selecting an objective magnification and also digital zoom. And we also looked at the concept of dynamic URLs that encode everything you need about a view. And so you can use those to share views or to save views for yourself. We also reviewed the annotation capabilities of Digital Slide Archive. We discussed the concepts of annotations, styles, and documents. We show you how to create a document how to import predefined annotation styles from a file, and how to use the annotation tools and some of the best practices for performing annotations. We also discussed the transparency controls and some of the display details uh, on a hover event so you can see detailed information about the annotations. We also covered how to create new annotation styles, and so we showed you how to change the properties of the annotation styles like the fill color, adjusting color, transparency, and brightness.